Fungi have diverse roles in ecosystems, including as decomposers, parasites, and in mutualistic relationships. By far, probably the most common lifestyle is decomposer. And so remember, that means that they're responsible for decaying all kinds of debris on the forest floor, for example, like logs, corpses, bodies, waste, so pee and poop. Um, and this is important and critical for the ecosystem because it recycles nutrients and makes them available for reuse. So an absolutely critical, if somewhat invisible, role in an ecosystem. Um, there are some fungal parasites. Parasites are organisms that absorb nutrients from a living host. Um, these usually harm the host, so we also sometimes call these pathogens, which means that they are disease-causing. There are some fungal pathogens in humans, so I mentioned yeast infections, for example, ringworm, jock itch, yeast infections, um, uh, are all examples of fungal pathogens uh, in humans. We also see a large amount of fungal pathogens in plants, in fact, much more common in plants than in animals, um, and it's the most common type of disease in plants. So 80% of plant diseases are caused by fungi, um, and these easily spread because the fungi are living in the soil, the plants are embedded in the soil, so they spread very rapidly through plants. And then we have some critical mutualisms that fungi uh, are involved with. And in fact, these relationships can be so critical for the organisms that they can't exist without each other. And so we'll look at some examples of that. So we'll focus here on parasites, but mainly on, um, a little bit on parasites, but mainly on mutualisms. So I mentioned that there are fungal pathogens in particularly in plants. Um, so these go by a lot of different names when, so things like smuts and rusts are what these are oftentimes referred to in their sort of common names. Um, they spread very easily by the wind or just from splashing up from the soil. And so once they're present in a field, they can spread very rapidly. Um, they harm the tissue a lot of times by just growing up, like their fruiting bodies come out of the tissue and damage it. So that's what's happening here. And so they affect the health and viability of the plant. And from a farmer's perspective, they can reduce productivity of their field. I mentioned that there are human pathogens caused by fungi, um, athlete's foot ringworm, yeast infections um, are the most common. So some skin fungal infections. Um, these are caused by something called candida. So we see this word yeast, but remember yeast just means unicellular. Um, and so sometimes people think that the same yeast that we use to make bread causes these infections. That's not the case. Um, Candida is a very different species from the yeast that we use in um, bread and beer making. Um, there's a, a very rare fungal pathogen um, that causes pneumonia, but you really only see it in immunocompromised individuals. Um, and so that's actually usually people with um, a, a well-advanced case of AIDS. Their immune system can't fight off the fungal, um, the fungus in their lungs and, and they'll get a, a serious infection from that. So as I mentioned, we'll focus the most on beneficial relationships. Fungi have a lot of different um, mutualistic relationships with photosynthetic partners. So we can more broadly say that it's an autotroph and fun fungi relationship. And again, this is going to be beneficial to both partners. That's what a mutualism is. So the autotroph benefits, the fungi benefits. That's why they're like engaging in this relationship. Um, and so whenever we're talking about a mutualistic relationship, always make sure you're clear about, okay, what is the benefit for the one partner? What is the benefit for the other partner? So we'll take a look at three types of mutualisms that fungi have with autotrophs. So mycorrhizae um, are fungi that have an association with um, the roots of a bunch of seed plants. So we think that a large amount, maybe even the majority of seed plants actually engage in these mutualistic relationships. So if we take a look here, this is a seedling of a pine tree. This is the root of the seedling. And 
a huge amount of the soil around that seedling is taken up with, with mycorrhizae. So again, this is like the hardest word, word to spell, mycorrhizae. Um, and this is its hypha, just all surrounding the seedling. And so this is benefiting the plant by increasing how much water and nutrients it can get. So as the, the mycorrhizae works through the soil, it's creating little channels for water to move towards the plant. And it's increasing the ability of the plant to absorb both the water and the minerals that are in that soil. The fungi is happy to do this because it's able to access nutrients from the plant. So the plant's roots are giving off sugars that the fungi can absorb. So remember that a plant is carrying out photosynthesis, so it's oftentimes making a lot more sugars than it can even use. So this doesn't hurt it to give sugars to the fungi, because when we hear that, we're like, well, isn't that stealing its food? No, because again, the plant is making so much food, it has plenty that it can share. Uh, and so that's the relationship. There's two types of mycorrhizae, endo and ectomycorrhizae, and they differ slightly in how close of an interaction there is between the fungi and the root of the plant. So endo and ecto are roots that mean inside and outside, and we'll see why we use those roots here. So endomycorrhizae, get that name, again endo means into or inside, because the fungal hypha actually penetrate into the area between the cell walls. So this area, this is the cell walls here, and the fungal hypha are actually growing into the cell wall. And they're not growing into the cell itself, but they're pushing against the plasma membrane. So I'll do a more simplistic diagram. That's the cell wall. This is the plasma membrane, and the blue here is the fungus. So the fungal hypha are growing in the space between the cell wall and the plasma membrane. And as it does that, it pushes the plasma membrane out of shape, which is what you see here. So it's actually changing the shape of the plasma membrane, but my diagram just kind of shows the space there is for it a little more clearly. So it actually penetrates into the space inside of the roots. Um, there's a specific type of mycorrhizae called arbuscular mycorrhizae. Um, that is what we're seeing here that makes a high surface area um, for transfer of the nutrients. So it gets super branched. Um, and this is the type that is often growing with a lot of trees. Ectomycorrhizae um, work differently. They still grow with the roots, but they don't penetrate the cell wall. So again, if I kind of do my diagram that I did before, see I did black for the cell wall, yellow for the plasma membrane, and then blue was my fungi. So they coat around the cell wall, but they, whoops, a little sloppy here with my pen. So again, I have my plasma membrane, or sorry, my cell wall, my plasma membrane, and then my fungi that are coating the exterior of the cell wall, but they don't go into that inner space. So they stay outside, okay? So they're coating the cells, but they're not actually penetrating that interior space. And so a lot of trees um, are also growing with ectomycorrhizal partners. Um, and so we see this mushroom here that grows in a ring around um, many types of trees in the forest. So endophytes are even more um, penetrating into the plant tissue. So they actually live in the leaf and stem tissues. So mycorrhizae, and I maybe wasn't as explicit as I should have been about this, are in the roots. Okay, so this is fungi plus plant roots. And then we have actomycorrhizae and endomycorrhizae, which differ in whether they penetrate into the cell wall or stay outside of the cell wall. 
Endophytes enter leaf and stem, stem tissue instead of roots. So they're on the actual growing parts above the ground. Um, the fungi, the endophytes fungi, still get sugars from the plant. So the plant is sharing its sugars with them. And then the benefit for the plant is a little different. Um, the, fun, the fungus that it's living with is contributing toxins or antibiotics that somehow benefit the plant, either by deterring animals that might eat the plant, deterring insects that might harm the plant, or protecting it from bacterial or microbial infections. So it's the, the fungi produce some kind of compound that gives them a benefit, and the fungi gains sugars. Um, so these uh, endophytes are oftentimes not as required as mycorrhizae um, in the roots, uh, as, as mycorrhizae are in the roots, but they still provide a big benefit to plants. So studies have shown that many plants will grow better, like they'll grow bigger and more health, healthy than plants that don't have the endophyte fungi. And then lichens are our third relationship um, between an autotroph and a fungus. And this is the... Um, the, the most required of the relationships. Lichens are actually not an organism. They actually are created when you have both things. So when you see a lichen, it is a, a fungus and an autotrophic um, algae or bacteria that are so interconnected with each other, you can't separate the two anymore. So when you see a lichen, they're really inseparable fungi plus autotroph. And again, that autotroph is either an algae or a green, uh, a blue-green bacteria called a cyanobacteria, so photosynthetic bacteria. So these are some examples of fun, or sorry, of lichen here. And so again, if I were to take a piece of this lichen, I would look inside of that and see fungal cells and bacterial cells interwoven with each other to create the structure. No one type of organism can make the structure on its own. Um, they have different body forms, and you may have seen these if you've been out in a forest or looking at rocks, so they're oftentimes growing on rocks here. Um, they can either look like a crust. This is the crustose type. They can look leafy, uh, and that's the folios type. Or they can look more like an actual like sticking out structure that's called the fructicose type. So the relationship here is again um, a, a beneficial relationship. So like with um, the other two relationships, the photosynthetic partner is always providing organic food molecules. It also provides oxygen in, its, in this instance as well. Um, to the cells because the fungal cells may be buried deep in the lichen tissue. The fungal partner is providing CO2 to the photosynthetic partner. So again, those photosynthetic cells may be buried away from CO2, um, water, and minerals. So like, for example, if this is growing on rock, there's no soil here. Um, and so the, the fungus is breaking down, the, decomposing this rock, and it makes the minerals that are in the rock accessible to the photosynthetic partner, the green algae or the cyanobacteria. So again, the photosynthetic partner provides sugars and also oxygen. The fungal partner provides carbon dioxide, water, minerals um, to help the photosynthetic partner. And that's the lichen.